The film begins with a guy named Fudoshiro, who was a senior student in the medical department at a famous university in Japan. Even though he was studying medicine, it didn't mean that Fuji came from a rich family. His parents had been divorced for a long time, and he lived on his own. Thanks to his achievements, Fuji was able to get a full scholarship to continue his studies. To meet his daily needs, Fuji worked part-time as a street photographer. At the start of the new school year, Fuji and his friend Pentax were looking for new members for the student club they were part of. They met a beautiful student named Haru, and like any senior, Pentax shared lots of information about the club's activities. At first, Haru wasn't sure if she wanted to join, but after seeing Fuji, she changed her mind. Fuji's good looks often caught the attention of many girls. That same day, Pentax and Fuji taught Haru the basics of photography. But suddenly, it started raining heavily, so Fuji and Haru found shelter. While waiting, Haru asked Fuji why he was interested in photography. Fuji explained that he couldn't always express his feelings directly. After they finished taking pictures, they printed the photos. Fuji was surprised to see one of the photos Haru took, and it was a picture of him. There, Haru simply said that she really liked the way he looked in that moment. Time passed, and the bond between Fuji and Haru grew stronger. It seemed like love was beginning to blossom between them. They couldn't hide their feelings anymore, which was clear from how they exchanged photos and letters to express their thoughts to each other. One day, Pentax invited the whole club to take pictures of the sunrise. According to him, the sunrise was beautiful and full of meaning. The next day, Fuji asked Haru to come early, and he offered to pick her up so she wouldn't feel too tired. On their way, they shared stories about their personal lives. Haru told Fuji that her mother had passed away a long time ago, and now she lived with her strict father. Haru had taken over her mother's role in taking care of the house. Fuji shared that even though it might seem nice to have a place to go home to, his life felt lonely. He believed that, despite the tension at Haru's house, at least it wasn't quiet and empty like his. That's why the people in the club meant more to Fuji than his own home. As they watched the sunrise, Haru was amazed by its beauty. It was the first time she had seen a sunrise that beautiful. The sight was so captivating that Fuji couldn't take his eyes off Haru's face. At that moment, Fuji asked if Haru would feel the emptiness in his heart. With courage, he held her hand, which made Haru feel happy. Fuji added that this was his first time falling in love and he didn't want to force Haru to accept his feelings. For him, losing Haru was scarier than being rejected. But before Fuji could finish speaking, Haru interrupted and said she was willing because Fuji was her first love too. Now Fuji and Haru were officially a couple. They spent their days together in the library, marking different photography magazines and promised each other that they would visit those beautiful places in the future. However, Fuji felt that waiting for the future was too long. He said he had saved enough money to visit one of those places, but the main problem he faced was Haru's father. Soon after, Haru invited Fuji to her house. At first, their conversation went well, but when Fuji asked for permission to go on a trip with Haru, her father refused. He then asked Fuji to follow him to a room where he kept hundreds of photos of Haru from when she was little until now. Since his wife passed away, Haru was the only person left in his life. At that time, Haru's father warned Fuji not to harm her and thought it would be better if Fuji stayed away. He even insulted Fuji, calling him a poor and jobless man who had been in college for over eight years without graduating. Even though he was rejected, Fuji didn't give up. He was determined to fight for his first love. Firmly, Fuji told Haru that this was a chance they couldn't miss. He promised to take good care of her during their trip. Turns out, Fuji's words touched Haru's heart. At the airport, Haru waited for Fuji to leave. But it seemed Fuji had to go alone. Haru apologized because she couldn't continue their relationship. She swore that she loved Fuji deeply, but she couldn't leave her father alone and didn't want to make him hate her more. With a heavy heart, Haru apologized once again, and their love story came to an end. Years later, all of Fuji's hard work paid off, and he became a wealthy doctor. Even though he didn't hold a grudge against Haru, their breakup left a deep scar in his heart. However, a patient named Yayoi helped Fuji understand the true meaning of happiness. Yayoi's words made Fuji realize that maybe he had closed his heart for too long to the first love he could never have. Yayoi's statement 
made Fuji think about how he could let go of the past and live a better life. His friend, Yoda, reminded him that happiness can't be forced. If Fuji kept looking for happiness in the past, he would never be able to find it again. Yoda advised that opening up to new love isn't as bad as being left behind. The next day, Fuji had another counseling session with Yayoi. During the session, Yayoi shared that in the past, she often faced rejection and betrayal, and she wondered why life seemed so cruel, as if she wasn't allowed to fall in love. Yayoi added that based on her experience, she believed every love has its own time. But Fuji responded by saying that he knew someone whose love lasted for a long time. Yayoi looked at Fuji gently and told him that he would soon feel love again. Without realizing it, tears began to flow down Yayoi's cheeks, and maybe, a new love for the man in front of her was starting to grow in her heart. Lost in the moment, Fuji and Yayoi began to fall for each other. They started meeting more often, and slowly, the love that had once died in Fuji's heart began to come alive again. Even so, Fuji still felt he couldn't fully accept it, because his heart still belonged to Haru. With a lot of doubt, Fuji asked Yayoi if the new love she was feeling was meant for him. Yayoi stayed silent as if she already knew what Fuji was going to say. In a soft voice, Fuji apologized for not being able to accept that love yet. Hearing this, Yayoi just smiled. She told him that it was okay, because, in the end, their relationship was really just between a doctor and a patient. She turned her face away, said goodbye to Fuji, and thanked him. Long story short, Fuji and Yayoi officially started dating. As they grew closer, Fuji felt more confident about taking their relationship to the next level. Eventually, they got married and spent happy days together. However, just as Yayoi had feared, their marriage began to fall apart. There were no more warm greetings or happy laughter like before. Everything felt like a formality. Yayoi no longer felt loved by Fuji, and Fuji didn't feel any passion in their relationship either. Even the tension at home seemed to disappear. Yayoi once purposely dropped a glass, but Fuji didn't get mad at all. Yayoi started to feel her old fears coming back. She had hoped that meeting Fuji would change her life, but things didn't turn out the way she expected. It seemed like her love had a time limit, destined to end when fate decided. The next morning, Fuji realized that Yayoi was gone. At first, Fuji thought Yayoi had left early, but as the day went on, he still hadn't heard from her. Fuji tried to call Yayoi and told her that he wanted to have dinner together after work. However, after waiting for hours, Yayoi still didn't show up. Fuji then went to Yoda's store and told him that his wife had been missing all day. Despite this, Fuji didn't feel too worried about the situation. He even admitted that he felt more comfortable living alone, free like Yoda. But Yoda responded by saying that going home to an empty house wasn't freedom. Yoda also added that waking up with no one to greet you and being sick with no one to care for you wasn't freedom either cause it was loneliness. At that moment, Yoda's words touched Fuji's heart. He started to realize that a marriage should be built on love, not just responsibility. But Fuji was confused about how he could fall in love again when his feelings seemed to have faded. So he tried to convince himself that he still loved Yayoi. Later that day, Fuji went to a karaoke place to meet Yayoi's younger sister. There, her sister asked if Yayoi had run away. Fuji was surprised and wondered how she knew. Yayoi's sister explained that it wasn't new for Yayoi to leave when things weren't going well. Even though their parents didn't treat them well, Yayoi was now living with Fuji. If Yayoi ran away again, it clearly meant that their marriage wasn't okay. Yayoi's sister advised Fuji that if he truly loved Yayoi, he should look for her with love, not just out of responsibility. When Fuji got home, he found a letter written by Yayoi. In the letter, Yayoi asked how to stop love from ending and how to make it last forever. She wrote about how their relationship was happy at the beginning, but over time, the love between them started to fade. Yayoi wondered what made Fuji fall in love with her in the first place and why those feelings had disappeared. At the end of the letter, Yayoi repeated her question about how to prevent love from ending. Reading the letter, Fuji was moved to tears. He wasn't crying out of sadness, but because he felt useless, and it even affected his work. His fellow doctors noticed that something was off with Fuji lately. When they asked him, Fuji said he felt like a failure, especially when it came to understanding Yayoi, even though he thought he should be able to with all the knowledge he had. 
Fuji felt foolish because his wife had to leave. One of his colleagues reminded him that doctors are just regular people who can also feel pain and failure. His colleague emphasized that when it comes to love, knowledge alone isn't enough cause Fuji needed to feel it with his heart and remember how he fell in love in the first place. The next day, Fuji visited the place where he first fell in love with Yayoi, the zoo where she worked as a vet while there. Fuji began writing down all the memories he had with Yayoi, hoping it would help him feel love for her again. But later that day, he received sad news that his first love, Haru, had passed away. Soon after, Fuji went to the place where Haru was laid to rest. There, a nurse invited him in and began sharing Haru's life story. The nurse explained that Haru often mentioned Fuji's name. She told him that Haru had become a photographer, capturing many precious moments with her camera. Fuji was surprised to learn that the places Haru visited were the ones they had dreamed of seeing together long ago. The nurse then asked if Fuji knew why Haru had been there. She revealed that Haru had stage 4 brain cancer, an illness she had been suffering from for a long time, but maybe she had never told Fuji about it. Haru chose not to treat her illness, instead deciding to spend the rest of her time visiting the places she had once dreamed of seeing with the person she loved. Haru regretted turning down Fuji's invitation in the past, feeling held back by her fears, and regretted not pursuing him. Even though Haru had lived with regret, she wondered if it was still useful now. When the nurse handed over Haru's belongings, she mentioned that Haru's love for Fuji would last forever. This left Fuji feeling conflicted. Even though he had started to feel a new love, the memories of Haru came rushing back. Fuji asked the nurse to take him to the place where he first met Haru. At that spot, Fuji printed out the photos from Haru's camera. As he dried each photo, his eyes stopped on one picture, and it's a photo of Yayoi. At that time, Fuji was confused and didn't understand what was happening. His mind was racing, but he didn't have enough time to figure it all out. Fuji knew where he needed to go. Finally, Fuji met Yayoi. His mind was filled with many questions why was Yayoi in that place? and why had she left him alone? But Yayoi didn't answer any of Fuji's questions. Then he managed to reach for her hand and hug her. Fuji admitted that he once loved Haru deeply, and maybe Yayoi also knew that Haru's love for him never faded, even until the end. Yayoi agreed, but admitted she felt angry. She was upset and jealous of Haru, the woman who had been so kind. Shortly after, Yayoi revealed that on that day, she found Haru's final letter. In the letter, Haru expressed her gratitude and explained where she was now. Because of this, Yayo went to visit Haru. She then signed up to work as a nurse at that place where she watched many people, including Haru, live out the last moments of their lives. At first, Yayo just wanted to learn about Haru's past with Fuji. But by the end of the letter, Haru's words deeply touched her heart. Haru wrote that love can only be felt, even though sometimes it fades and is replaced by boredom. According to Haru, boredom is like an unavoidable pain. But suffering is a choice. When someone feels pain, like the pain Haru had in her head, they have two options, to complain about it or to rise up and chase their dreams. Haru chose the second. In love, boredom is unavoidable, but choosing to stay and fight through it is up to us. Then, Haru mentioned that Yayoi had forgotten to hide her marriage certificate, but still thanked her. Haru thanked Yayo for loving the man she loved the most and for making him fall in love a second time. Haru also wished them happiness together. After hearing all of this, Fuji could only ask Yayo to return home with him, back to the place where they once dreamed of happiness. At that time, Fuji apologized for neglecting Yayo and making her feel unhappy. With hope in his heart, he asked her to stay by his side and love him forever. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is sometimes, love is like a headache cause you can't avoid it, but at least you can choose if you want to complain or just take a nap.